You got a bean there? I got a bean. A it's bean. a kidney bean. Ah, oh, it's a kidney bean. <laughs> and it's got a hat, a little sombrero. <laughs> the kidney gets a sombrero? Yes, the kidney gets a sombrero. Why didn't Floyd get a sombrero? Because Floyd doesn't need a sombrero. <laughs> Okay, so we're looking at the kidney, which primary job is not really endocrine, right? Its main job is going to be to filter the urine and or filter the blood to produce urine, which we'll be talking about um, later on in the semester. But it also does make three separate hormones, one of which is erythropoietin. That's going to help with red blood cells. Calcitriol, which is also basically vitamin D, which is going to help with calcium levels. And then renin. You will love renin by the end of this chapter. A hey, renin and its cycle are just crazy. <laughs> now what is this sombrero called? The adrenal gland. Ah, the adrenal gland has two layers, right? Yeah. The adrenal cortex, which is kind of the outer layer. And then the adrenal medulla, which will be in the middle. Yes. Now each of these are completely separate areas and make different hormones. Um, the adrenal cortex on the outside makes a lot of what we think of as our steroids. Okay, so it does produce, yeah, is it gonna stay? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, maybe. Um, the corticosteroids. So things like cortisone are gonna be made from the adrenal cortex. Uh, a lot of our corticoids, okay, so the mineral corticoids are glucocorticoids, as well as a hormone we call aldosterone, which is also gonna help with our um, <laughs> uh, yeah, aldosterone is going to be helping with blood um, pressure and water levels as well. Now, the inside of the adrenal gland, which is the adrenal medulla, only makes two major hormones that we have already referenced. Epinephrine and norepinephrine, which we've talked about quite extensively, really, with the fight or flight response in our nervous system. So that's going to be made directly from inside the adrenal gland that sits on top of the kidney. Hmm. Now we move kind of over a little bit in front of over the in kidney, in front of the, to yeah, and <laughs> anterior to the retroperitoneal cavity, which is where the. Um, kidney is going to sit, we find the stomach. Now on the posterior part of the stomach, we have that little gland we saw on Floyd called the pancreas. Now this pancreas kind of looks very adipose when you actually see it on a real fresh sample like our kitty cats. It is very glandular. Yeah, it, it looks kind of funny. A lot of people completely overlook it. Now the pancreas is actually an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. Two things. I know, it's busy. We're going to talk about it as an exocrine gland in the digestive system because it makes basically every digestive enzyme we have to make the food that we eat or digest the food we eat. Um, but on the pancreas or in the pancreas, we also have to worry about its ability to digest or help us intake sugar. Post-its need to, it. no, post-its are not agreeing with me. I got it. All right. So those two hormones are insulin and glucagon. So insulin is going to help when our blood sugar levels get too high. And glucagon will help when our blood sugar levels get too low. No. All right. Now we got two left. Two glands left that are going to be also endocrine and exocrine. So how are we going to do this guy here? Um, this is Floyd's girlfriend's. Uh, she has her lady parts and we have one gland in here that is again exocrine and endocrine which is the ovary the ovary is obviously going to be ovulating eggs to be um, fertilized but it's also going to make and produce estrogen and progesterone and then the male counterpart to that would be the testes now the testes are a little easier to find out here in the open. Uh, the <laughs> testes are going to also be making sperm um, for an exocrine function, but then we'll make testosterone as an endocrine function um, to be released through the body. Very good. I think that's it. That's a wrap on endocrine. Endocrine out.